Hey, hey, good evening. This is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Hey, AJ, thank you for saying you good evening. Perani, you changed your name, but nevertheless, very good evening to you and everybody else who is going to join this roundup of the rules for the Zugfahrt mit besonderen Auftrag at the same time getting into the context our stuff about the anschließende Weichenbereich and uh, the shunting and train service stream Theodoros right on time take note maybe <laughs> well uh, Obviously, as always, we are talking about playing a computer game, so please leave the real trains and railway installations to the professionals who are in charge uh, for doing this. Yep, and um, we are driving back our service on the Meinthalbahn. Not train depot. What am I doing? Meinthalbahn. And on my very much loved 612 let's turn on the markers CD radar is now lurking I got it right last time you said you are hating us I don't know why and Erica Gant has a question already fire away Erica and now he's lurking does PZB work while going reverse? Yes, it does. It limits you when you're reversing and going back first to 100. And then, obviously, it cannot work the way that you are usually used to because the magnets are on the wrong side. So if you don't switch to the um, cap on the other side and use the piece of B stuff that is installed there then you cannot use the magnets properly because your receptacle for the magnets is on the right side opinion on Bremen Oldenburg it is a nice -ish route but I was a bit uh, disappointed when I got it first because it is short and it is not so super interesting because it is always very much flat and with the same speed um, it has this washed out optic from this era so but there is still a lot to discover i'm sure that i have not discovered yet in bremen oldenburg now Meintalbahn, it has a very nice optic it looks very nice it is a nice to drive route so I'm very happy that I bought it. CD Radar says, I didn't know you were already so proficient in Czech. Yeah, I did not understand this VAS. I said, what is that? But this Najim, yeah, that that I uh, that is one of the words that I know. And uh, Erika says, are a bit bland, bland for, yeah. Maybe it's always how you come into it and with what expectations. Am I Austrian um, for a quarter? My mother actually was born Austrian and my grandfather on my mother's side uh, is and died Austrian. So that is my Austrian influence. But I have never been a legal citizen of Austria. All right, let's drive our train. It is a 612. So it is faster. Reverse the handle in so that we can open the door. Actually a train that I see a lot in real life, the 612. And you can see how the people spill out because the train is really high. Not a great train if you have to travel in a wheelchair. turn on the GST even though we cannot use it on this line here let's increase the brightness of the indicators as much as it works and then let's turn on our CIFA 
PZB and GNT. So, did I forget anything? Brakes, PZB, lights. I think we're good. Even the reverse race. To the front. You think Tadami signaling would be difficult? Honestly, many of the trains are not that... Accessory. Got to go to concert. Enjoy! And I looked already in the Japanese signaling a bit. And I tried to find the official guidelines for that. And had it translated with Google Translate and tried to find my way around even if I can't understand it properly. So, before we actually run away here with our train... I wanted to direct your attention to the fact that we are actually getting started with this signal here. A little white light on this funny little signal that cannot even show two white lights, only two reds or one uh, white one. We all know in the meantime this is a Zugdeckung signal, a train cover signal that it divides the platform into two parts. It is a main signal as you can see, white, red, white mast shield and since it is a main signal at a station that is neither a starter signal nor a home signal, it is an intermediate signal. And we will see later in the presentation that it is possible to start trains with a Kenlicht, but only if that is um, allowed in the local regulations in former times in the Örtlichen Richtlinien and also known as Örili in this funny little word and now it will be in the Streckenbuch or the Betriebsstellenbuch if you are looking at it from the angle of the people who are working at the station and not from the angle of the people working on the train. HP2 limiting us to 40 in the ensuing Weichenbereich. And I really like this this throttle and dynamic brake handling on this train. It's not just setting the combined handle but always hold it so that it runs up and down. <coughs> I'm not ending the PCB starter program because I can't go faster than 40 anyway. Now it ended. But we are not out of the ensuing Weichenbereich. As we can see there is still a switch. And thanks to Rutger, I actually changed my HUD setup. You can see, we don't see the VMAX anymore and we don't see the gradient anymore. We are too giving us a thousand hertz. Still, we can accelerate beyond the 40 now. But not for too long, because soon we will have to stop at the Schaffenburg Hochschule. Yes, very retro. Still figuring out what is the best way 
to stop the train is combining the hydrodynamic brake of this train and uh, the air brakes. This train does not have an electric dynamic brake but a hydrodynamic brake in its hydrodynamic um, transmission. What's your favorite loco of all those in the games? Hard to say. That might actually change from week to week, but one of my all time greatest is the GP38 2. I also like the Fowler 4F. But this is really difficult to say. It's like with horses. If you have more of them, you never know which one is your favorite, right? This HP2 here allows us to go 60. But since we got a new thousand hertz from the VR zero. I did not accelerate beyond the 40 because we were still in the restricted monitoring and I did not release since we got a new one from the VR zero. Now the restricted monitoring stopped normal thousand hertz so that I can accelerate a bit because we are late. So, there are a lot of people, but they don't want to board the train. They are just watching. And even though we did not drive so carefully, the throttle style of the 186 We have an 186 in Trains in the World. The one from the Taranta Ramp is that on 186? Gotta check. So, going across the switches with 80. Super Paul 5000. Servus, grüß dich Gott, sagt er ja schön. Ah, but in Simrail, and yeah, I see. And in, in the Train Planet demo, there is also 186. That is also a weird. Yeah, th now I know what you mean. That's true. So we got a new set as 3 with 8, so even on the next switch we are limited to 80. And you think, huh, why are we going on the track for the opposite direction? And we are actually not going on the track for the opposite direction, we are going on the unidirectional part here, because the right track is actually diverging to the right 
in a couple of hundred meters. here and after that comes the LF7 with the 100 as soon as the train has passed we can start accelerating we still have two kilometers until we get to Uber now Billy approve Sometimes you are saying enigmatic things, CD Radar. <laughs> I see. Oh, I first have to stop the train before I start reading this. It's easier to remember forward, 100 and backward, and then to put it in a specific place, either to increase and decrease. Yeah, that's true. It is sometimes easier, but this train here has this increase and decrease as well. And I think it works really well. And I like the fact that you can stop it when it is running down at a certain position. Or kick it to zero, to zero with a second with a second hit so Trent do you want to come to a stop? you do so and with this nice view of a tractor in over now, I think I will come to my presentation. What is quite a challenging presentation today? Do I actually have it anywhere? Yes, here it is. Because now we are actually recapping the rules for the Anschließenden Weichenbereich. We are recapping what we talked about the Zugfahrt mit, with besonderen Auftrag, <laughs> the train service on special assignment with the Asset signal, the replacement signal, <coughs> and we're recap recapitulating the shunting speed limits, and we are going to a new thing, the um, ZS7 on site, also Zugfahrt with besonderen Auftrag. Well, we have talked about Weichenbereich. We also recap this last week, so I can do this really fast. Train, station, some sidings, crossovers. We are going into the station at the home signal, Einfahr signal that limits us to a certain speed. And then we stop here and then we get started by the starter signal with a different speed limit. And we were talking about how long is this signal speed here valid. And when you're going into the station, at the home signal, we learned that the general rule is that the uh, ensuing interlockings, where the speed limit is relevant, is until you get to the next main signal. Unless you stop before that on a regular basis, then it ends at the point where you stopped so that the new signal speed can already take force as soon as you're starting your train from this stopping position that was the idea here. When you're going out of the station at the starter signal, then typically you don't have to stick to this signal speed until you get to the next main signal. It does not make sense. This is for going across the switches, the speed limit. So as soon as you are out of the interlockings, have passed the last switch with your last axle in the train, then you can accelerate. That is the general rule, typically marked with the yen sign. If there are no switches, obviously, then it is enough if that the train passes the starter signal. And there are the situations where you want to end the Weichenbereich, the interlockings earlier, so that the train can start accelerating earlier, so that you can push more trains through the tracks and earn more money. And then you have the 
possibility to use an isolated set S3 with a higher speed or in West Germany at least with this ZS10 sign that is the uh, sign that marks the end of the Weichung Bereich. So those five rules for the ensuing interlockings. The general idea is every speed restrictions only needs to be in place as long as one axle of the train can go wrong on a switch and derail. So as soon as the last axle is through the last switch, then the train can accelerate back to line speed, does not need to be slow anymore. And if we have an area of interlockings that ends with a starter signal, like a station typically, then we can say the train has to go to the next main signal. If there is an area of interlockings that just ends without a main signal at the end, because it is open track, then it would be very inconvenient for the train to run to the next main signal with reduced speed and then we can allow him to go faster. So this is the general idea about this rule. And then always the train has to clear the interlockings completely before it can start accelerating. All this was allowing a train to run with a proceed aspect on the main signal. The dispatcher can set the signal to an aspect that allows the train to pass. Fahrtstellung eines Hauptsignals. And this at the same time requires that the dispatcher with all the technical systems that make sure that the dispatcher is not uh, wrong and is not making any mistakes, that all those technical uh, safety systems um, make sure that the track is clear, especially that the switches are aligned, including the rails and Gleissperren and stuff, and that the flamp protection is made sure so that also from the side no other train can run into our service. And only if that is provided for, then the dispatcher can set the Fahrstraße uh, and lock the Fahrstraße, so the path for the train to the next main signal, so that it cannot be interfered with a different train service anymore. And then uh, first uh, he can set the signal to a proceed aspect. In case anything goes wrong, and all those technical things in our uh, signal box um, maybe malfunctions so that it signals that the track is occupied even though it is not or that a switch is not aligned probably even though it is because the sensor is broken or whatever then we can get into a situation where the dispatcher even if she or he wants to cannot set the signal to a proceed aspect and then uh, so that we can still run our trains and get them out of the station or into it. We have learned that in a situation where it is unclear if the track is actually clear, if the switches are aligned and the flank is protected, the dispatcher can see if, it, if he, he or she can actually at least make sure that the track is clear by looking out of the window or by uh, additional safety systems that can say, okay, at least the track is clear. I don't know about the switches and flank protections, but the track at, at least is clear. <laughs> Then we can go into the area with train service and special assignment and use <coughs> excuse me and use the replacement signal to set this one as signal, but for that the dispatcher needs to be able to make sure that the track at least is clear. It looks like this on the KS on uh, HL signal. We have seen on the HV signal, it has those three white lights in a delta formation, also on the semaphore signals. And this can happen on the starter signal, well, actually on every main signal. That features um, a light that can be set to this flashing white or the three white lights in delta can show uh, a, a, a SAT signal. What do we have to do as a driver? We have to stick to 40. And how long? For how long do we have to stick to 40? We have heard that until 2015 it was actually the same like with the Anschließenden Weichenbereich interlocking rules. But since then we have our standalone rule for how long we have to go 40. What does not stop um, people still talking about Weichenbereich? 
in connection with the Ersatz signal. And the main difference is that we lose this green rule with the regular stopping spot. So when coming in in our protected area at the station where we have a starter signal at the end, it is the blue rule generally to the next main. The stopping position uh, is not longer there in the replacement signal thing. Whether we stop or not, we are going 40 until we have passed the starter signal, whatever the starter signal might give us for a speed restriction. That is probably the biggest difference between uh, ensuing interlockings, anschließend der Weichenbereich and the special rules for the replacement signal. The other rules are different in wording but most of the time uh, the same in the effect. The basic is that we go with our last axle across the last switch in the path or any other spot that is marked with the yen sign in our timetable and that is typically if it is not the last switch in the path or in case we have no switches the exit signal then maybe a spot where we have an isolated ZS3 or a ZS10 signal so we are not going by the signals the signals are not relevant and we don't have the rule that uh, puts us to the starter signal but typically the yen sign is in the same spot so that we come to the same thing CD radar deleted something. Someone tried to sell viewers. Well, thank you very much for for the moderation. All right. So that was the thing with the Zugfahrt with mit auf, auf besonderen Auftrag, the train service on special assignment 40 in our pseudo quasi uh, anschließender Weichenbereich. There was one difference that is that was for block signals and open track that are main signals with no switches behind them for that we do not even have to pass the signal with our whole train it is enough that the tip of the train passes that signal with 40 and then we can accelerate again so this is a second difference to the ensuing weichenbereich anschließende weichenbereich regeln we have this thing that when we're getting started with the Assad signal, that this is already true for starting the train already from departure, just like with a uh, regular speed restriction coming from NZS3, for example. Yeah, what uh, was the thing with the four signal function 2000 meters rule? We have talked about the fact that when we're getting started at the starter signal, the red light in connection with the Assad signal can um, cover up any distant signal information that this signal can give us. So this signal as it is here does not have any uh, distance signal functionality and information but we have seen that depending on the signaling system signals of the kind can actually have a hidden distance signal information like in the KS system if we have the downward pointing uh, yellow triangle then this is a signal that is at the same time a main signal and has the functionality of a distance signal when it is showing KS2 for example and this is covered here with the Assad signal same on the HL they can have typically also a downward pointing yellow triangle on black ground and on the HV we can here see for the first time the old version of the Assad signal with the three white lights in Delta and they can have a VR signal head and then have distance signal functionality on this and <coughs> we don't know what we would have gotten so those are the same signals <coughs> that we had gotten that we would have gotten if the signal had worked as intended and then we would have gotten for example an HP2 allowing us to go 40 or 60 if it is marked like this in the timetable and we have would have been warned about 
and the next signal being red. So the VR0 here is our thing with the distance signal functionality here, the KS2 in connection with the downward pointing yellow triangle, even if the downward pointing yellow triangle was not there, a KS2 aspect in the KS system is always distance signal functionality. Otherwise we would not have gotten a yellow light there and in the HL, for example, allowing us to go out with 60 and the top one. And <coughs> so there was this additional rule that even after having cleared with the whole train our pseudo anschließender Weichenbereich, we still have to stick to the 40 until we read the next main signal aspect uh, and approach the signal in a way that we can still stop in front of the next main signal if it is red. Ronny, der Thierry-Egypt-Fahrzeugführer. Oh, German stuff. Good evening. Yeah, please stick around and tell me what I go wrong. I have got something, some, some, some things about starting trains with the marker light, with the Kennlicht, that I have not been able to figure out. Maybe you can help with this. And I have a master table at the end where you can tell me what I got wrong. So, <coughs> fun off bis on an Auftrag is always fun. We have talked about the four signal function and the 2000 meters rule so that if we have a hidden distance signal functionality in our red signal with the replacement signal <coughs> like we can see here on the dark VR uh, uh, signal head or with those signals with the downward pointing yellow triangles then we have to stick to the 40 even though our last axle has passed the yen spot until we can read the signal aspect on the next main signal up to a maximum of 2000 meters why 2000 meters because if we have traveled 2000 meters from the starter signal then we will probably not get uh, no, no not only probably then it is actually excluded that we still get a main signal that is in connection with a distance signal functionality here. Either we have missed the main signal and nothing bad happens, so just as well, or for some weird reasons in our pathing, we are not getting a main signal in connection with this distance signal and we will always get a new distance signal before we get to the main signal. Uh, some errata still to this. <coughs> I have learned that in some weird situations on the HL signals, you don't necessarily need to get this plague here with the downward uh, pointing yellow triangle but since an HL uh, signal always has the upper lamp it has always a distance signal functionality and there is also a signal that is treated as having a distance signal functionality that looks like this it's, it does not have the white red white mast sign but the white yellow white yellow white mast sign this is a mass sign that allows you to pass a red signal uh, on besonderen Auftrag then or at least it is treated as besonderen Auftrag if you cannot actually reach your dispatcher then you can pass this red signal even without an order um, but you need to be careful and need to try to reach the dispatcher later so but i won't get too deep into into this thing because i don't think that we have this in the game i've seen there in the hamburg lübeck thing there are the sv uh, signals that have mass signs of that uh, thing but i i still have to find out if they are actually working so that was recap for the four signal function, the 2000 meters rule in connection with train service and special assignment on replacement signal. And this works only if the dispatcher can at least uh, ensure that the track is clear, that the Favik is clear. What happens if we can not assure as a dispatcher that the track is clear we just don't know whether it is clear if the switches are reliant probably if the flank protection is provided for then we cannot use the replacement signal because it allows us to go 40 not on site but 40 so we are not necessarily able to stop in front of an obstacle on the track so if we don't know if the track is clear then this is actually too fast 
probably or possibly in some situations. So if we don't know if the track is clear, then we actually have to go on side maximum 40 and this until the next main signal. This is where you can read it up in the directive by the what is it, what are they called now? Infra Go no longer DBnet AG and um, signaling wise we could get the ZS7 caution signal, the Vorsicht signal. So it is not pointing upwards but the pointing downward, downwards and it is not white but it is yellow. And this orders us to pass this signal with on-site speed, so driving on-site so that we all are always able to stop in front of an obstacle, train, broken rail, whatever and not go faster than 40 anyway. So all the rules that we had for driving on special assignment by a stat signal are also valid for driving under caution signal. But on top of that, we have to go on site. <coughs> Don't forget about the 400 meters past the next main signal. This is where I will get to now when I get the bridge over the distant signal functionality. Do we need a distant, function, a distant signal functionality? Actually, the rules from how they are worded say, yeah, the 2000 meters rule for the distant signal functionality is also valid for set to seven. But we don't actually need it because we are already going on site towards the next main signal. So <coughs> we are actually always in a situation where we can stop if the next main signal is red. So we don't need it. And then, <coughs> We have to go beyond the next main signal. If we have not cleared the yen spot before, we have to pass it with our whole train length so that we are out of our pseudo anschließender Weichenbereich for the uh, train services with special assignment and also at least 400 meters beyond that. That is what Ronnie just said. So we have to pass it with the tip of our train 400 meters beyond that and if we have not yet cleared the anschließende Weichenbereich then also we have to wait until our whole train is out of the uh, pseudo anschließende Weichenbereich has passed the signal. <coughs> so if you read the rules you think actually if your train is longer than 400 meters I think my interpretation would be you have to go on site, maximum 40 until the tip of your train has passed 400 meters beyond the main signal that you just left. And then if your train is longer than the 400 meters, then obviously you have to clear the uh, Weichenbereich. So I have to clear the signal, but now it would be 40, no more on site, right? Cool, that's correct, Ronnie says. Perfect, so that is that and that is the 400 meter rule and why is that yeah i wanted to demonstrate why 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 those 400 meters why does that make sense this has to do with the overlap with the durchrutsch weg behind the signal we know that our red signals are protected by 2000 hertz magnets and the 2000 hertz magnets stop the train as soon as the train tries to pass a red signal but obviously the train will take some distance to come to a stop and this is what we need the Durchrutschweg for because if you translate this word by word, sliding through distance, that would be the dis the distance that the train needs to slide through after it gets stopped at the red signal. So this overlap actually needs to be taken into account when we are giving <coughs> uh, if if you are yeah, Ronnie says, Fahn auf Sicht ends after the 400 meter. If your train is 600 meter long, the remaining 200 meters is then under besonderen Auftrag. Thank you very much for confirming this. I have never seen this confirmed before, but this is how I read the, the, read the, read the rules. <laughs> and it is great that you confirmed this. Thank you very much. Coming back to our overlap. <coughs> so, why is this o overlap relevant then? So, since a train that is trying to pass a red signal would slide all this distance, 
it can't be that there are any railway vehicles in this overlap before we set this signal to green if it is an automatic signal for example so the train has not only to clear the signal before the signal will not this one that one here will go to green but the train also has to clear the overlap before the signal before will be set to green because this only this ensures that if the train gets stopped at the next signal that is then red at the 2000 hertz magnet it cannot hit anything that is left there by the train in front of it so actually obviously the next main signal has this too and <coughs> the area that is connected with a certain signal is not the area or the distance between the signal to the next signal but between the end of the overlap to the end of the overlap for this safety reasons we have talked about this when we talked about the london underground i think and ronnie says the 400 meters are also there because in the rückschalt contact of the signal can also lay behind as far as 400 meter beyond the signal this is not only due to the durchrutschweg okay great that is another reason for that but the durchrutschweg is at least one reason for it so if there are actually situations possible at least this is what I, is what i have learned uh, that so a railway vehicle that is left behind in the overlap for example a lost car or whatever or a, a stalled train or the last car of a stalled train then this signal can already go to green even though the overlap is not is not cleared and um, that we don't we don't want to have so this is why we um, have to travel the 400 meters and then it is the thing with the rückschalt contact of the signal okay but to keep it a bit simpler is that um, this signal here for example the starter signal talking about this now can be green even though in the overlap there is some obstacle and to make sure that we are not running into this obstacle we have to traverse through the overlap on site still so i hope this was not too confusing for the explanation the explanation gets even more complicated if we also look at the rückschalt contact but the important fact is that our driving on site is until the tip of our train has reached a point 400 meters behind the main signal and if the train is longer than still then we have to go the remaining distance until the train has cleared the uh, signal in question with the 40 maximum 40 if we have not cleared the yen spot before if we have cleared the yen spot before then this second thing with the train length is not of relevance anymore yeah this is the 400 meters rule and one other thing what is always a nice uh, punchline on this even if you are uh, getting admitted to the lcb or uh, full supervision in the etcs before you have reached this point of 400 meters behind the signal you still have to drive those 400 meters on site as far as i understood the rules so even if your lzb does babe and shows you a beautiful 320 you still have to go on on site for a couple of hundred meters until you have cleared this 400 meters behind the main signal <clears throat> yeah that was the set to seven with the on site in addition to the 40 that come from the special assignment Abfahrt auf Kennlicht is the, nast, the next thing that I wanted to discuss. Zustimmung zur Abfahrt auf Kennlicht. Clearance for departure by Mark Light. This is how we started our train here, our service in the beginning of this stream. And um, from what I have read, this was originally a, a thing in a so-called exceptional permit and Ausnahmegenehmigung. 202 that has been put into the Fahrdienstrichtlinie um, in 2015 or wherever around that and is now a part of the 
rules that the DBnet AG or the infra OG OGO or whatever they are called now um, have every railway carrier to accept so there is the possibility especially that your train is standing on one part of a longer platform and is waiting at a signal that looks like this in the west at least two red lamps in the east there would be only one red lamp it is a main signal typically an intermediate signal because it is in a station area and it is neither a home nor a starter signal and would be a Zugdeckung signal, train cover signal. And starting this train can work by setting it not to a green aspect, not to a proceed aspect actually, but an aspect that allows the train to pass the signal by putting it onto a steady white light, what is the marker light, the Kenlicht. That means this signal is to be treated as no longer there. It is deliberately switched off because we don't need it anymore, that was the original uh, thing of the marker light, but we can also start the train by removing the obstacle that uh, that um, yeah stopped the train from going on. And in the rules there is also now a connection with the clearance for departure that the uh, dispatcher has to give to the train if the train is supposed to leave a station. And this works only if there are regulations for it in the local regulations in former times, the Ö-Release, now the Streckenbuch. <coughs> and this has to allow it for every special situation, as much as I understood that. I have never seen a Streckenbuch and what is actually written there, because they don't public uh, publish that. <coughs> but I, I know from the published regulations that it needs to be set out in the Streckenbuch, that it is uh, a proper way of um, allowing a train to leave a station. What do we have to do then? We have to stick to 40 again, just like on special assignment, but on a different basis. I uh, cited the rule here. And then go, if it is not a starter signal, but an intermediate signal, until we get to the next main signal. So again, the blue rule, the whole area between the main signals, stick to the 40. If we are started at the starter signal, not at the Zugdeckung signal with uh, the marker light, then we have a similar ruling as with the uh, special assignment. It is the um, Yen position again, typically the last switch in the track, uh, but it can also be any spot that is marked with the Yen sign in <coughs> the Ebula or the timetable. And it can also be the signal itself It is, if it is marked with the yen sign, typically if there are no switches in the track and stick to the 40 again. What I have not found in the rules is also the thing that the train must have cleared at the end completely, like with the uh, Anschließende Weichenbereich. I guess it is so, so I would recommend to do that um, um, before you start accelerating, because the thing is the same, you don't get any information about what is the permissible speed, what is the safe speed to go through the switches that there are. And uh, so I would I would think that coming from the logic of things, it needs to be that the whole train with the last axle has to clear the end spot or the starter signal before it can go to line speed. What I also know is what requirements actually need to be met for the dispatcher that the dispatcher is allowed to start the train with a marker light. Since we are not going on site, I think that at least the track must be clear and it must be assured that the track is clear. Since we are going 40, it would be possible that the switches are not actually ensured because at least the train cannot derail if we're going only 40 uh, and we're going across the, a, a wrong switch and um, well flank protection with 40 is typically also acceptable for going on a special assignment but the track must at least be clear i well i try to find out if this is stuff that needs to be set out in the local regulations under what situations or conditions the dispatcher is allowed to start a train with a uh, marker light but I actually don't know. I didn't. I wasn't able to to find out. 
Also, I was not able, is if, if it is a proper procedure to admit a train to come into the station at the home signal with marker light. Obviously, if we switch off a signal and the train is already running and we have a running service, then the signal is just to be treated as not existent. But treating our signal as the home signal, the, the Einfahrt signal as non-existent, uh, strikes me as odd. So I would think that this is not a proper procedure and it is not mentioned. The starting with Kenlicht is mentioned for the intermediate signal, what would typically be a Zugdeckung signal, or at the starter signal. No, unable. Yes, all right. So this probably does not work here. The thing with the distance signal functionality, according to the rules, it is not set out for starting a train with the, with the marker light even though we can run into the same situation as with uh, the ASAT signal, the replacement signal, even or also with the marker light uh, switched off signal, we can lose a distant signal functionality that we can have on this signal. But uh, the rules do not provide for it, so I guess that in a situation where your starter signal has a distant signal functionality, it would not be allowed in the local regulations to start a train at this signal with the marker light. But again, I'm assuming here only um, uh, by looking at the, the system of, of, the, of the ruling, I have no idea if that is like this. If we are getting started with a marker light at a, uh, at a signal that has a distance sh signal functionality, then I would actually uh, suggest that we apply the same rule here for the distance signal functionality that even after having cleared the yen spot we go on with 40 until we can read the next main signal and its aspect but probably this cannot happen because then it would not be allowed to start the train there or it must be ensured that they have some ruling of that kind Ronnie says it's an it's usually for the before announced Zwischensignale, Aschaffenburg to Hanau, they usually do build it like so that the Durchrutschweg for opposing tracks gets smaller, if that makes sense. All right. So it is usually before announced uh, Zwischensignale, yes. So the intermediate signals that we talked about. And, and, uh, and here we never have a distance signal functionality, obviously. So that makes sense, that makes a lot of sense. Because here we cannot display a... a and and I, I guess in the game, at least, if we're getting started by marker light, then it will be at a intermediate signal, at the train cover signal that looks like this. Like we got started here. Yeah, thanks again for helping us, uh, helping us along here. And now my master table only written with one S, obviously, not with two. That does not make any sense here. So let me correct that quickly and then go back into my Leseansicht. Now I have to run through the whole presentation before we get to my master table again. But I did not want to have too many S's on my here. Master table. All the different ways and the regimes that you can encounter. Yeah, spoiler CD Raider, you already got everything that I got on my on my super full master table. Just for us playing this train game. So what different signals we can encounter and what different start regimes we can have to uh, mm, yeah, get a post upon us. The one that we, <coughs> in most of the cases, probably 98% of all the cases in the game is by setting uh, a main signal to a proceed aspect. That can be obviously a full or a high green, like the Americans say, a KS1 or an HP1. It can also be a yellow one, a KS2, that allows us to proceed here obviously being prepared to stop at the next signal. It can be one with a speed restriction like the ZS3 here that allows us to go 80 <coughs> and then as soon as we are out of the Anschließenden Weichenbereich can go to line speed. It can also be an HP2 
that does not have a numeral but also has a speed, speed restriction or the more arcane ones from the HL variety for example this one that allows us to go 60 now yellow over yellow band and with a flashing yellow on top uh, warning us about that we have to um, be prepared to pass the next signal with 60 or 40. <clears throat> Obviously this is uh, just examples here for proceed aspects. So more or less everything that is green or yellow and not red is a proceed aspect that allows you to start your train and then <clears throat> we know that the dispatcher made clear that the TSF is provided for. So again what was that? Track is clear, the switches are set and the flank is protected. That is what I meant here. So this must be uh, provided by the dispatcher, we can rely on that. And then we have to stick to the Anschließenden Weichenbereich. If you if are getting um, a speed restriction that was between home and starter signal the whole way, uh, unless we ha are stopping at a regular stopping position that it ends there, so that the starter signal can rule the distance from starting the train again until we get to the starter signal after that typically until we clear the last switch with our last axle if there are no uh, switches then it is the signal itself so we have only to clear the starter signal with the train and there is the possibility by cutting this short with additional signage for example with the isolated set as three giving us a higher speed than we got at the starter signal or this set as 10 in west Germany. Also here we have to clear this spot with our whole train with the last axle and then we can go to line speed. That is Fahrtstellung eines Hauptsignals, Proceed Aspect und main, as uh, main Signal. This is what we typically do in the game most of the time. What we have talked about just right now and what we uh, had to do in the beginning of the service that we are playing today is clearance for departure by marker light Abfahrt auf Kennlicht. That was the steady white light and the signal typically dark. So it is switched off deliberately. Here that will be the thing on our um, Zugdeckungssignal, the intermediate signals. We have learned that in the Streckenbuch the local regulations must allow for it, that works. What the dispatcher has to provide for, as I said, I do not know. Judging from the fact that we don't have to go on site, at least the track must be uh, certified clear. Otherwise, we would have to go on site, so the 40 can only work if the track is clear. Then maximum 40, not on site. From the intermediate to the starter, if we're getting started at the intermediate, if we're getting started at the starter signal, then um, again until we have cleared the last switch in the path or any other uh, spot that is marked with the end sign in the far plan in the timetable that also can be the starter signal itself if there are no switches, for example, in the path. That was <coughs> clearance for departure by marker light. Then the whole thing with Zufahrt auf besondre, uh, Zugfahrt auf besonderen Auftrag, train service and special assignment. For example, typically last week's stream, the set as one, the replacement signal, the Assad signal on HL and KS, we have the flashing white here. On the HV, we have the old version with the three white lights in delta formation. And this can only be used by the dispatcher if the dispatcher was at least able to ascertain that the track is clear. The switches and uh, the schriftliche Befehl kommt alles noch. The schriftliche Befehl kommt alles noch. Um, for a set signal will be um, the 40 plus the 2000 meters rule, if there is a distance signal functionality, home to starter, the whole area, the green one with a regular stopping position, we don't have it here on the special assignment rules. And when going from the starter, it is again uh, almost the same that we have for proceed aspect on the main signal, but with a different ruling, typically last uh, switch in the track 
If not, a different spot is marked by the yen sign in the timetable can also be the starter signal itself. The same is true for getting started with a ZS8, what is the Gegengleisfahrt Ersatz signal that allows us to go on our way with the same rules but also allows us to go into the track for the opposite direction. It looks like this either with or without the lights being bent at the end. I have to get it that they are actually flashing in a proper way together. No? Otherwise it looks funny. Oh, that's better. So that would be the one that you see with the K in the KS system typically. You know, we have not talked about uh, running on the opposite uh, track because we don't get it a lot in, in the game. But we will talk about this 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 uh, this at some time, Gegengleisfahrt, Gleiswechselbetrieb and all that stuff. And uh, this is giving you the permission to go into the opposite direction track. And, and, and Ronnie said, never have I ever seen that in real life or even in a sim be it our realistic ones or any else. <laughs> okay, and he is laughing. Yeah, but it is in the rules and it looks like this. And on the HV variant looks like this. It is the Asad signal, but it is flashing. And it is giving you every permission that the Asad signal is giving you and at the same time um, the assignment to go into the track for the opposite direction. What we have never had in the game so far is that a TS3. What is a TS3 now? I have never seen the signal in a sim or in real life or everywhere. He <laughs> said this one is broken, man. It's blinking, says <laughs> Yes. Well, have you ever seen a TS3, Ronnie? Is, do they actually exist? But they are mentioned in, in, in the rules. So so what are they good for? What, what What is this weird sign good for? This is for at least what we heard of. Never seen those, says Ronnie. And he needs to know. We <laughs> it is for banking locomotives. Sometimes the train is so heavy that the locomotive that is uh, pulling the train does not make it up the hill. Uh, out of its own power, so we need to uh, put a banking loco at the back of the train that pushes the train up the hill. And then obviously it gets uncoupled and returns to our station. What is typically, you know what trains do. Uh, if if a, tr a train is leaving a station, then typically it's good riddance and the train will not return unless it is uh, uh, a Wendezug and then it is a new train coming back, uh, typically on the different uh, direction track then but the banking locomotives are returning to the station that they actually were sent out and this sign allows the banking locomotives to come back into the station and it is also for Sperrfahrten that are returning to this station if we are actually getting this in the game then I will dig deeper uh, how they are actually treated they are coming back on the Gegengleis obviously because it was the real Gleis or the proper Gleis the track that they were using when they were banking and then they are returning and as soon as they are returning it is the track for the opposite direction where they are actually returning and this sign allows them to come in the station. The SH1 can be um, um, a signal that allows train service on special assignment but also in, in, uh, in special situations it is, all, uh, it is mentioned in the rules uh, but also, this is a thing that only gets clear if you are looking on uh, movements on opposite direction tracks more closely because then there are some situations where you don't have a home signal on the track for the opposite direction for a train coming uh, on this track and we are more or less off-label using this SH1 signal that is there for shunting services and we more or less hijack it and use it as a replacement main signal for the train that is coming on the wrong track and is allowed into the station as, as a home signal. Typically you have it on the right side because this is where you would expect the shunting signal and have an, what is it, in any Ford 
board, the chessboard board, the chessboard, the Schachbrett tafel, on the left side where you would expect the signs for the driving on the opposite direction track, and this is pointing you to the shunting signal and is more or less promoting it to a main signal for train services as a replacement home signal and then you are a train service on special assignment this is for getting into the station so a replacement home signal it can also be used if you are allowed to go on on the track for the opposite direction but again only for getting it complete here and the rules are mentioning it um, typically an SH1 signal is not a signal that sends you on as a train service on special assignment either you just stay your train service when you're passing it or you are a shunting service and then you are getting the permission to pass this point this Sperr signal here what also gets you on a train service on special assignment is this board that set, set as 12 like on S-Bahn Berlin you find this a lot you are allowed to pass a red signal not on the written order number two but on um, a verbal uh, Zustimmung uh, agreement clearance from the dispatcher to pass it and then you are running as Besondere Auftrag special assignment stick to 40 distance signal functionality then obviously the dispatcher can give you orders we have not talked about orders yet there is a special um, protocol for how the dispatcher can give a driver instructions orders that the driver has to uh, execute then and this can be the order number one the order number two the order order number three and the order number six that can send you on as a train service for special assignment. Order number one would typically be in connection with a trapezoid uh, board allowing you to come into the station. Order number three would allow you to leave the station. Order number two is the order that you need in written form to pass a red signal typically and the order number six is again for sending you in the track for the opposite direction. I think we should have a stream uh, about orders and how they are given to the driver and what is the system and the logic of those different numbered orders. The idea is actually to have a system to give orders to the driver in a way that it is always clear what, what the dispatcher wants to tell the driver so that they are that there are not so many misunderstandings and again this funny mast uh, sign with the white yellow white yellow white um, also even though it is not mentioned in this part of the Fahrdienstrichtlinie if you're passing this without the permission of the dispatcher because you're allowed because you were not able to reach the dispatcher then you have to follow the rules for the um, train service and special assignment from what I have heard but I was not able to find this in any in any directive maybe if I have to look at the, the directives for S-Bahn service Hamburg or whatever where well mass sign of that signs are used then what we have talked about today if the dispatcher can not uh, make sure that the track is clear then he has only the, the 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 possibility to send us on site with the set of seven with the caution signal that looks like this on in all uh, signaling systems the three yellow dots with the point to the bottom like a v for foresight caution and uh, you can also use the the field 12 the order number 12 and tell you to go on site in connection with something else so orders obviously can modify the rules for what you have to do um in a in a more free way or in a in a, fr fr a way that allows more leeway than than signals do and in the game never ever the dispatcher is giving you any orders right even though you can in the game actually distinguish between getting sent on on site and, and getting sent on not on site because the dispatcher sometimes tells you to proceed as signals indicate that means you can go not going on site and sometimes uh, the dispatcher tells you to proceed with restricted speed and this translates typically to 
go on with uh, on-site speed so that you are able to stop in front of an obstacle or a train. The rules are a bit different. We don't have 40 plus 2000 meters rule. We have on-site maximum 40 plus the, the 400 meters rule. So that when we're started, that we are, even if we're coming between home and starter, we have the whole area plus the 400 meters and from the starter to the next next main as well. So the yen spot has no relevance if we have to go on site because we don't know if the track is clear. So we have to go the whole area that would be covered by this signal with on site speed, restricted speed to be able to stop in front of every obstacle. Then Befehl Nummer 2, schriftliche Art, Durchführung als Sperrfahrt, Service on Blocked Track. This does not require anything. I, it is, it is uh, typically so that a dispatcher can send Sperrfahrten in a blocked track, even though there is already one. There are special rules for that. And this is just for signaling wise. We have the red signal or a red Sperrsignal, main signal, whatever. And the written order number two would allow you to pass it. And it also has, there are in the, in the header of the of the order there are certain words that this dispatcher can cross out if they are not relevant and one of them is Sperrfahrt and then the dispatcher would not cross it out and uh, actually typically call it a Sperrfahrt if it can also be given in connections with the other uh, orders that allow you to pass signal or if it always needs to be at least in connection with the order number two i don't know that really but the uh, the the interesting thing is that the dispatcher actually has to call it a sperrfahrt and then we have this special regime for sperrfahrten on block uh, on block track if they are pulled we have a maximum of 50 if they are pushed like the locomotive is at the end of the uh, consist then we are limited to 30 and if there are any not technically secured um, level crossings then it's even 20 so because yeah the train needs to be even more careful then and uh, obviously what you actually have to do then and watch out for and in what parts of the track you have to stick to certain speeds or to on site is something that the dispatcher has to give you orders for to make um, this work so in in this situation you would more or less be uh, governed and ruled by what kind of orders you get from dispatcher in in this form but it is a different regime all of this Fahrtstellung eines Hauptsignals, Abfahrt auf Kennlicht, Zugfahrt auf besonderen Auftrag, be it on site or not, and a Sperrfahrt is all Zugfahrten, is all train services. It is not uh, shunting services. Shunting services, we have talked about this two streams before, I guess, are typically um, allowed by the dispatcher that can be a Weichenwerter than typically in, in the wording of the rules and is often allowed with only a verbal uh, uh, assignment or with an SH1 or in the East an RA12 signal in the game typically on a red uh, main signal with those two little white lights that we also have in other signaling systems with slightly different meanings but here in Germany it allows a shunting service to pass this red signal without any further um, uh, order and so on but it is always clear that when we are passing a signal with this uh, with those two white lights we cannot be a train service we must be a shunting service otherwise we were not allowed to pass the signal um, Obviously, it can be on a Sperrsignal, Lichtsperrsignal, Formsperrsignal, or it can be on a Wartezeichen. They can also sport this SH1 if they are used as flank protection signals, then they should have those lights. 
in the west as in the east if they are not used for flank protection signals but just for uh, running about on on the yard then they can uh, only have the w in the east it would be only white in the west it would be orange as well but without the lamps and uh, if it is used as a flank protection uh, signal then it has the lights and then you need to get the sh1 to be able to pass it regularly you would be limited in the situation where you have to check for track clear switches aligned um, flank is protected level crossing are secured and you're not sent into an area where you cannot move your electric train anymore because the um, electricity is not provided so you are typically limited to on-site maximum 25 kilometers for a shunting service but we also have talked about the possibility if the dispatcher can verify that the track is clear that the switches are aligned then he can announce a clear track Ansage freier Fahrweg like when we're we're running out of Munich with this signal here the SH1 on the um, HP0 and the track limit was 40 and we yeah, used this this provision here to say okay it is uh, okay to leave Munich main station with 40 on this signal with our ICE3 um, and we also heard that there is the possibility that local regulations can default this clear track announcement under certain circumstances so that the dispatcher does not have to declare it every time that the train is leaving that way and if you want to transition into a train service this typically happens without a stop at the next main signal as soon as the tip of the train has passed the next main signal but it needs to be a main signal not only a distance signal at least from what i have uh, understood in the rules so this was the master table for the different regimes that we can actually get when we are getting started with our trains in the game most of the time it is proceed aspect on a main signal sometimes we're actually getting here the white lights the sh1 on the hp zero quite often actually and nowadays now in the mind talban at least we are starting we are getting started at an intermediate signal at the zugdeckung signal with the kennlicht um, we still have to get a situation where we are in timetable mode at least started with an asat signal obviously the zs8 does not exist in real life <laughs> either in the game it doesn't and the set is seven as a starter signal i have not seen that in the game we will see this signal at the end of our service today when we are reaching miltenberg um we are not getting it in a situation where the dispatcher does not know whether the track is clear or not because he will definitely know that it is uh, that the track is not clear until the next main signal because we are getting stopped at a zugdeckung signal at an intermediate signal and in this case the set 7 is used to prepare us for the fact that we don't have the whole track at the platform to stop our train but that we have to stop at a red Zugdeckung signal but we will get to this as soon as we finish our service so Ronnie are you still here anything to add or to it's a long stream this afternoon says Perny yeah, I hope this is not um, overloading everyone here but um, I prepared this in, in three streams now about shunting services, uh, train services, about um, special assignment. We have a stream about Bergfahrt in the Niedertalbahn. And now I wanted to cook all this together in, in, in one system where it actually makes sense. And uh, this is more or less what I would put on my, on my, on my little helper sheet that I might carry into into <laughs> into a test so that i have it all together if i have to re refer to that and theodora says man and i thought starting up a plane and takeoff procedure are the most complicated things among sim players <laughs> i guess they are th those things are quite complicated too but <clears throat> well to be fair most of the time we are getting getting started with the proceed aspect then 
we only have to know about the anschließenden Weichenbereich to be uh, able to start at uh, start accelerating at, at the correct uh, position. Sometimes we are getting started with this signal here, then we need to know that we are a shunting service and can never be faster than 40 until we pass the next main signal with our with a tip of our train and have actually be prepared to stop at red uh, Sperrsignale, Schotterzwerge, uh, like in Munich um, two weeks ago, I think. And um, uh, yeah, the thing with the Kennlicht actually since you are just starting your train and uh, have to stick to the 40 because of the PCB starting program anyway, it will not typically give any additional requirements for you to adhere to. But nevertheless, there is actually, in my opinion, a lot of more stuff that we could use in the game for um, yeah, random events or for certain scenarios where we can uh, resort to this Sperrfahrt we had in the Nittertalbahn in this one scenario, for example, when we had to help this one train. And there are some other scenarios where we have to go into a block track, right? Yeah, and anyway, so I wanted to put it all on one sheet and get it into a system because seeing it next to each other and um, seeing it in a system, then it typically makes a lot of more sense for me than uh, if you just hear about a lot of different details and uh, then start confusing the 400 meters rule with the Assad signal or the 2000 meters rule and the ZS7 or the Sperr signal and the Sperrfahrt and whatever. So this is, in in my opinion, what gets all these things organized in my head when I'm running my trains in my simulation. And then we can actually go back to our train. Perni asks, how do you think I could improve my stops? I guess... Practice, obviously. Look at the counter that is running in the top left. And then I would just... This is how I do it. If I am running a new train and I don't know how I have to slow down this train to stop at a platform then I start applying 50% brake force from 100 kilometers when I am still one kilometer away and then I see if I am slowing down too fast or I'm slowing down not fast enough and so I more or less try to get a feel for when to start slowing down And DB, uh, D CD Raider says, DB, you should use you for teaching new drivers. Well, probably not. And Theodoro says, thank you, Tiger, much appreciate for the cheat sheet. Yes, and OBB and all of the British companies. Thank you, very much appreciated, CD Raider. Like now, for example, Perry, 100 kilometers. 800 meters, I put the dynamics to 100% and then I see what happens. I want to be at 60 when I'm 200 meters away, for example. And I see that the dynamic brake is enough. I don't know, do not need my air brakes. I can actually release the dynamic brake again. And now that I'm getting closer to the 200 meters, I'm getting the dynamic back to max and the train brake. And I see I'm a bit too fast, so I am adding more brake. Now I'm releasing it again. 
and I stop short a little. Now I make a note to myself in this situation less air brake. It was okay. Oh, thank you very much for the bits. I think that those are the first bits that I ever got. Thank you so much, Perny. But the th the thing with the counter is that it's distance between you and the stop point, not amount of track, which would make it so much more helpful. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That is as the crow flies. But still, it is it is good enough to give you an indication for it, I think. And then after a while, you know those stations where it is especially deceiving with this counter. And then I have like a brake curve in my head at so and so many meters away I want to be not faster than this, at so and so many meters away I wa don't want to be faster than this. And so I can add more brake force or less brake force. Here was a bump in the track, did you see? Bump, bump. What's so nice on this train is when you're getting closer to your speed that you want to get to, you can have the power running down and then stop it at 50 or 60 percent. And then you have to increase it again because you had it run down too far. What are the plans for future streams? Might not be able to make it next week. Actually, next week I was planning to do my 500 subscribers on YouTube special. 12 hours running the Flying Scotsman on the most scenic routes in the UK and the world. Then I wanted to talk about door uh, control systems picking up a suggestion that was from Th Theodorus, I think. And um, different signal markers and the Rule 55 in British signaling. Some more Northeastern Corridor signaling. Gegengleisfahrt. This is what is in my head at the moment, but I'm still always open for suggestions and he says I can I think I can find time for it actually that would be great so there will not be presentations next week then we're only 12 hours running on scenic routes Probably. Maybe I have to shift it and move it to the week after. Got to see how this fits into my agenda. Like 12 actual hours, yes. 
I did it for 250 subscribers one day at uh, southeastern high speed at then Oh, almost. The charity javelin, yes. Yes, CD radar. That was the charity javelin. When I shunted into the wrong track with my charity javelin just in the beginning. <laughs> And I wanted to send a train with the Flying Scotsman from Scotland to the south of England and maybe then on the continent and even to the United States. Even on routes where there is... So careful, we have a restricted 500 hertz here because we were approaching a red signal, stopped at the red signal. So we mustn't pass the signal here with more than 20 soon as we are passing the signal that has turned green now, the red lamp comes off, we can release and accelerate. 12 hours I come see it when I can, done on my schedule for sure either. Yes, will it uh, still start at 1900? No, I think I will have to start some time uh, during the day here in Europe, so that means like midday noon UTC plus And I have to play around a bit to see if, if I can actually send the Flying Scotsman, for example, uh, along the no uh, Northern Trans Pennine from Leeds to Manchester. Those routes don't have um, a rail tour services layering into it. And I would like to more or less go through the whole... Um, no, not the whole UK. I can actually only go from Scotland to the south to South England because there are no Welsh and no North North and Irish routes. And then drive the flying Scotsman through the through the tunnel to France. Unfortunately, we don't have any routes in the Netherlands or Belgium, and then on some nice German routes. Grossignort is probably a nice route for the Flying Scotsman as well. Wow, 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 wow. So, make sure that we don't get stopped at the 500 hertz. Slow down to 60. What was that I wanted to see in Austria, as I said back then? You wanted to check in Bregenz if they actually have those weird combinations of uh, 1000 hertz and 2000 hertz PZB magnet on signal repeaters. That is a thing that we still don't know, if that is actually real. <laughs> because actually someone uh, had a comment uh, on, on this thing not so long ago, and I remember then.
And I was still wondering whether I can go to Bregenz on the Deutschland ticket, but I uh, am afraid not. <laughs> See, the Raider says, yesterday I came back from Austria and now I, it occurred to me that I actually wanted to check something. Well, I guess you will get to Austria again. Let's unlock the doors again for the people who want to join. I guess I have to watch the video then. I ah, okay. So where are we by the way? Obenburg Elsenfeld. Alright. Speaking of Austria, says Theodorus, the scenic route I mentioned back then is called the Brennerbahn. Ah, yeah, I see. That would be another thing for if they have all the assets assets for the Simmeringbahn. Maybe then can use it for the Brennerbahn as well. Can we see the exit signal here? Yes, you can see it. It is green. So we can release as soon as we are rolling and I don't have to go all the way with 40 <laughs> because I don't remember what was that. <laughs> ah to rewatch the video in of the weird combination ah you will remember this was that they have a 2000 Hz magnet or a magnet that can also work as a 2000 Hz magnet on a signal repeater on the signal nach armor <laughs> mounted at the end of a platform so that the train can be stopped already at the repeater and not uh, at the exit signal and that is weird We said at the time it makes sense, but it is weird never nevertheless. So now I overbraked significantly. 50 meters is a bit short. And Theodora says, I love the horseshoe curve on that route. My many vids on YouTube about train spotting on that area. Oh, yeah. There's really almost no way to beat the mountain routes and stuff like this. Didier says, I guess there is not anything like that in Wien. I have no idea. The problem is that it might be difficult to see what number there is on the PZB magnets if you don't want to climb into the track and cause a major disruption. You saw a 500 hertz magnet in Wien? Ah, yeah. At least in Wien they have them. Yeah, I guess on the, on the newer tracks they have the 500 hertz magnets now. Because in the rules they always say they should be there. And only on the older tracks they are working without them. Theodora says look for Sankt Jodok am Brenner, it's the nearest station to the area I'm talking about. I will
Has any one of, of you guys watched those videos of the runs of this one guy who chatted with us when we were playing on Sandpatch Great the other day? Hockey is live, was his name. Running coal trains in British Columbia. Those videos are really nice as well. Not for you, CD Raider, because you don't like American stuff. And I guess this includes Canadian stuff as well. But I was enchanted. Why does the game show the object complete sometimes and sometimes it doesn't? That is a good question. It might be connected to what camera views you're actually using. Sometimes you can distort this object complete message if it just pops up when you're switching from one camera angle to the other. Now the train does not want to come to a stop. Wirt. Let's see if we can tweak it. The object complete message when I switch the camera. Oh no, I was too late. I haven't, says Theodorus, for two reasons. It's three hours long and two not having interest about CSX railroading at the moment. I see. I think it was uh, CN, Canadian National, at least. The trains that he was passing was Canadian National. Again, don't fall into the trap of the restricted thousand hertz. <laughs> yeah, I did not watch the three hours, but I watched parts of it and it's beautiful it's really beautiful This is a weird situation here, isn't it? Where you're getting the distance signal. Like... 30 meters in front of your stopping position. I definitely would stop in front of the distance signal here. Instead of... Passing it with... One third of my train and then stopping. Because then I have to approach the next signal in a way that I can stop in case it turned red in the meantime. But who puts a distance signal halfway along the platform? So did I not close the doors probably? properly? What happened? Now it works. 
Klingenberg is the next. So what do we have to do here? Why did I yank in an emergency brake? Did anyone notice why? Because... The level crossing was not secured, obviously. The emergency brake did not make a lot of sense here because we came to a stop not before. Not before we had already passed it. But nevertheless, I have learned this watching a video some time during the week if you are approaching a level crossing and see that the bars are not down you are required to apply a Schnellbremsung and actually I should have used the horn as well Then maybe we should tell the dispatcher that the level crossing here is not working. Again, KS7. happened now. Did I pass the 500 hertz too fast? No. I got a weird Zwangsbremsung here. One that does not need to be released. Interesting. I have to rewatch that. have a 500 hertz lamp and I don't and here's the 500 hertz magnet so it wasn't the 500 hertz maybe it was just the brake curve from the 1000 hertz monitoring not sure at the moment and it was a weird penalty brake that released itself And now we're getting a, a downpour. Again, restricted 500, stick to the 20 until we pass the signal. Yeah, chilly. It's still a bit to go. Then release and put your foot down.
<laughs> Theodora says, sorry, didn't really pay attention last few minutes. I was making my own stop at Dresden Hauptbahnhof and CD Radar says, wow, that was definitely weird. Yeah, maybe it was actually the brake coil for the thousand hertz, but that should have stopped us. For good, no. I was under the 80. True, yeah. Cannot be the brake curve. I was already under the 80. Well, I have to rewatch that. Maybe we find a solution for that. Or an explanation. I was actually speeding. Chili, I need both of my hands. You cannot bug me now. I cannot hit your head. Laudenbach is, I think, not the second, but the third, but last station here. And there will be Klein Heubach, and then we are in Miltenberg. Oh shit. Not trying to organize the dogs while you are approaching a station. Or you have to... <laughs> yes, and... <laughs> I was sure on the wet tracks if I can actually do a... Vollbremsung here. So I threw some sand. <laughs> also a thing that we should do in um, the simulation if we are getting a penalty break to help the penalty break by also applying a Schnellbremsung and throwing sand not looking like the squirrels in the headlights but sander and brakes to full application So, Klein Heubach, second but last. That makes sense, should be included in tutorial, yeah. True. Signal is yellow, KS2.
That was weird again. Why did the train brake not react now? Somehow I must have always hit the lag. Does anyone know if those weird jokes that are always running here on on the PIS screens were explained on some official stream? Bitte beachten Sie Zugpersonal heute ohne Humor. Please note that the staff on the trains have no sense of humor today. Sometimes it's this. The train will arrive shortly. The tracks are already here. Does this exist in real life too? So restricted. 400, but the signal is green. Path begriff of more than 30. Good to go on beyond the 40. So, last lap to Miltenberg. And when entering Miltenberg, we're getting another tidbit of the is it a bug or is it a feature variety? I guess it is a bug, but it can totally be treated as a feature. You tell me you're the one who lives near one such thing. That is true. But I have never actually seen it on the stations that I have been. And here we're getting the 60 on the sign that we can almost not read. And, well, photo mode again. I think this is wrong signage as well. Because it is warning us with an LF6 sign. It is black on yellow, not yellow on black. So we should get the 60 with an LF7, the black on white rectangular sh uh, sign. But what we are getting is a white on black set as three sixty. Go to mode again. Here. And this should be preceded. Not by an LF6, but by an L, uh, by a, by a set is three V, the bl the yellow six on black on a triangular shaped sign. I think, but this was not the tidbit that I was for, that I was talking about. The tidbit is actually the next one. What is the next one? Again, photo mode to 
look at it properly. What signal aspect is this? A so-called dark signal. What do we have to do with dark signals if they are not switched off by a uh, marker light and if we are not running under LZB and we are in the Dunkelschaltung, then we have to treat this dark signal with the worst possible aspect. So a warning and then an imperative. Yeah. And what is the worst aspect that this signal here can show? Is it red? No, because it is not a main signal, but any two board it is a distance signal. And the worst aspect that the distance signal can show is uh, Halt erwarten is the yellow aspect on the KS uh, distance signal, the single yellow lamp. And this is why we have to treat this signal as if it showed the KS2, the yellow. Meaning that we have to acknowledge it. We're getting our th thousand hertz and have to prepare to stop at the next signal have to prepare for a 500 hertz what is not really a problem since we are below the 60 anyway Rammstein Klaus, hello for the barking emoji, nice to have you on the stream we got a 500 hertz actually, that means we have to slow down 240 in the 153 meters and now we can see it already our si our signal that we are approaching is not completely red photo mode but it shows something yellow underneath and what does it actually show underneath it is our set is 7 the caution signal the three yellow lights we have talked about and this is warning us that we have to drive on site maximum 40 when we're passing the signal. We don't have to stop in front of it. Yeah, at least the PCB 1000 Hz is correct. That is true. It should have shown the yellow lamp. You can encounter a situation like this in real life, I should say. So it is a bug that can be treated as a feature, but probably should not have been uh, extinguished all the time in dark but shown uh, a yellow aspect. I guess this is because the signaling system does not work well with the set to 7 here. So we don't need to stop, but we have to go on site as, so uh, on site as soon as we are passing the signal here. And why are we getting the signal here? Not because the dispatcher does not know whether the track is clear or not. Actually, he knows very well that it is not clear until the next main signal. It warns us that we are entering the station on a track with verkürztem Einfahrweg, I think would be the term, with a shortened track. And this is because we are required to stop at this intermediate signal here, the Zugdeckung signal that is showing one red lamp. Actually, I think it should show two red lamps here in the west. This would be more like what you expect in the east, but maybe it is different with Zugdeckung signal, I don't know. At least we are required to stop here, this is why we are getting the Vorsicht signal, the caution signal for the Einfahrt and not a green light. So, we are going slow, since the weather is bad. Going on site probably means not running the full 40, but slower. And every time when passing a red signal, even with additional signals, even if you are allowed to pass it, never forget the Befehl 40 PCB override. You can see the white lamp with the Befehl 40 actually being on on this train. Hold it until we have passed the 2000 Hz magnet, otherwise it will stop you even though you are allowed to pass it. So never forget every time when passing a red signal, even with permission, hold down your PZB override key until you are safely past the 2000 Hz magnet. 
the white befil 40 indicator should come on you should hear the burp sometimes you get an indication that you are limited to 40 and then we can stop at our red Zugdeckung signal here there are different ways to warn us about a situation like this where we have to stop at an intermediate train cover signal like you can get a yellow 2 or a yellow 3 or only the white one at the home signal all that would indicate for you that your track is shorter than you might expect there is also this I think what is it ZS13 or whatever this Stumpfgleisanzeiger but that is probably if you are running into a track that is not uh, with a Zugdeckung signal but with actually a buffer block at the end well guys that was it for today it was a lot of um, operating rules and regimes and uh, rules let me know if uh, you find any errors or inconsistencies um, and um, apart from that thank you very much for staying with me on this stream I like the Maintalbahn I really like it it's a nice DLC it's not the longest one it's not the most diverse but it is fun driving and it looks nice and I hope this is what DLCs under Train Symbol 4 will look like lighting wise we are back or we are away from this whitewashed optic in Train Symbol 3 yeah I like it and I hope we will get more and more different situations signaling wise and for that we now know all the rules that there are to know for running trains in the simulation not in real life in real life I think everything is more complicated so we can only talk about the simulation so chilly then I'm done now we can go out and you guys take care have fun and maybe see you next Saturday for the 12 hour celebration steam for the 500 subscribers on YouTube good night Bernie. Good night, CD Radar. Good night, Theodorus. Guys, thank you very much and take care.